a failure. Constraints in Blender. What could be more fun? I have a three video series on constraints in Maya and I figure I'm probably gonna have to do the same thing here in Blender for Blender constraints. For this first constraint video though, we're gonna be using the child of constraint and I'll show you guys how I used the child of to create the animation you guys saw, minus all the memes. And actually, well, yeah, that's about it. So let's just hop in. <laughs> So our goal here is to constrain this gun into Max's hand. And if you're not familiar with Max or me, uh, Max is one of the characters we just completed for our extensive Blender animation course that's in the making. I, I won't get into it too much. I'll talk about it a little bit later in the video. Um, but let's go ahead and bring this gun into Max's hand exactly where we want it. That looks good. So let's go ahead and select our weapon and set keys and all the attributes. Just press I when hovering over the attributes here. All right, so let's go ahead and head over to the constraint tab right here. Once you have your object, your weapon selected, click add object constraint, head over to child of, and here we can give the target. So let's go ahead and eye drop. You can eye drop or you can type it out and let's eye drop max proxy. Now, just for clarification, what happened here is we have the child selected, which is our gun, our weapon, and we're telling it who this we're telling this child who the parent is so let's go ahead and in the bone section okay gunzo your parent is going to be hand ik left and what happened gunzo is gonzo so so to fix this and to bring him back you have to press set inverse and that sets him back into his original position because otherwise it would think that Gonzo would think that Max, Max's hand, was his parent the whole time. So, but that's not the case. And so this sets it back to its original position. Make sure, this is the disclaimer, make sure to only click this once. Click set inverse once, because if you keep clicking it, it's just going to mess things up. So make sure you don't accidentally press set inverse or clear inverse without realizing what you're doing. So aside from uh, our little disclaimer of not clicking these multiple times and just clicking at that one original time. Uh, you also have some options here for location, rotation, and scale. What this means is what do you want this child of to consist of? For example, if I turn off scale and if I go ahead and scale the hand, the gun doesn't scale with it. But since rotation and translation were on, if I rotate the hand, now the gun rotates with the hand and translate, it translates with the hand. So that's that's what those options meant. So we turned off scale, but I, it, for me, I'm just gonna leave it on. It, it doesn't matter to me, but now if we go back and if we scale this, <laughs> the gun kind of breaks with an scale with it, which is pretty cool. So here I wanted Max to accidentally throw the gun when he goes to shoot it. Now don't mind the animation. I, I made this very quickly just for this video, but we can't have him throw the gun if the gun is constrained to his hand. So let's talk about how to fix that. So let's say I want Max to throw Gunzo at this frame. Let's say this is the frame I want the gun to be out of his hand. So let's go ahead and set some keys here. I'm just going to key the attributes. And what I'm going to do is actually come one frame before the gun is released and set some keys here as well. Okay, now if you guys pay attention in the constraint tab, we have influence again don't accidentally click these two but under underneath underneath these two we have influence and this is the constraints influence over the object and what we can do is the frame prior to him letting go we're going to go ahead right click on influence and insert keyframe so we set a key on 100 percent influence and the frame where we want him to let go from the gun we are going to change influence to zero. Now you might expect, since we have a key on the attributes, once we zero out the influence, the gun's gonna stay in the same place. Wrong, the gun is gone. <laughs> so how to fix this is, I'm just gonna control Z this back. Before you zero out the influence when Max lets go, come to object, or if you have a proper rig, and instead of object, this would be posed. I'll have the difference up on the screen for you guys, but in my case, it's an object. So I'm gonna come to object, apply and I am going to click visual transform and th the gun is gone but 
what happens is that it saved its space, sorry, it saved its position in space. And so once we go ahead and set keys on these new uh, attributes that we just made, zero out the influence and the gun is back exactly where it was. So what was happening beforehand, it, it almost had double attributes. So it had the attributes of where it was constrained on top of the attributes of where it was supposed to be. Now when we go ahead and click on Gonzo, boom, we have full reign over him. So now we can have him, I don't know, say, oh, I want you to be here and I want you to like spin around like eight times. Now we have something like this. It's, it's a little broken, I have to work on it, but now the gun isn't constrained to the hand anymore. I hope this video helped you. If you did, make sure to check out 2anime.ca if you're interested in an extensive Blender animation course that we're working on. Um, it is set to pre-launch in November on Kickstarter. So until then, uh, what we're doing is we're giving out monthly updates on the course's progress, and we're also sending out monthly animation tips to our website subscribers. So if that tickles your fancy, head over to our website and sign up to be part of the email list, and you'll be updated on the course's progress and whatnot. With that, happy animating, and I will see you guys in the next video.